there are three epic snow force locked in a never-ending snowball fight and it is your job to join one of these teams in their fight hello my name is julie and freezathon is back If you're unfamiliar, Freezeathon is my wintry team-based month-long readathon that I launched last year, and it is coming back for its return. Over the course of December 2024, there are going to be three different teams, all based around different genres, who are going to be competing to try to read the most books and collect the most points for their team. And the team that has the most points per person by the end of the readathon will be the winner of Freezeathon 2024. You, as the reader, are going Going to be choosing which team you would like to be on. You are going to be doing a bunch of reading during the month and submitting points for each book that you read. First of all, all of the links to all of the things that you need to know for this readathon are in the description. So the information document that has all of the rules, descriptions of all the prompts, FAQs, as well as a link to the Instagram where announcements will go out, the link to the the link to the Discord, where almost all of team communication will be happening, so you definitely do not want to miss out on the Discord, as well as all of the Google Forms that you need to fill out. The sign-up sheet is down below for you to choose ahead of time what team you're going to be on. This is going to be very important this year, so if the readathon has not already begun, definitely do that sign-up sheet, as well as the book tracker form, which will eventually be linked down below. I do not believe it will be available at the the time that this video is posted, but it will be added, which is the actual form that you use every single time you read a book, checking off all the prompts, submitting it for points. This is the way that you get points. And the last thing that is linked down below is a point simulation sheet that is for you to figure out how many points a book should be worth. Somebody in the Discord last year came up with this, and so I decided to provide one for everyone. So all of those links are down there, and they all link to each other. So no matter where you're following the readathon, you'll be able to find what you need to find. Let's talk about our three teams. The first team is Fortress Frost, which are those who are destined for adventure and want to brave the worst that nature has to offer for them. This is our sci-fi, fantasy, and speculative fiction team. Our second team is Castle Coco, who believe the best part of winter is snuggling inside, cozy by the fire, with a book in hand. This is our romance and realistic fiction team. So this has changed from last year. Last year this was romance and cozy. This year we are going with romance and realistic fiction. So realistic fiction can be general fiction, literary fiction, historical fiction, anything set in the real world, anything that's main genre is listed as fiction. I wanted to include a type of reader that was not represented last year. And our final team is Tundra Tower, who know that the scariest part of the year is when the elements are out to get you. This is our mystery, thriller, horror, and suspense team. It is most advantageous for you to pick the team that has the genre you are going to read the most in December. You don't only have to read books in that genre, it just behooves you to pick the one that matches your reading the most. If you're on a romance mood this month, even if you're not typically a romance romance reader, pick the romance team. Sign up for what team you're going to be on. It's going to be helpful to find out what the size of the teams are going to be. So there are four different ways for you to get points for each book that you read this year. The first is the page points. You are going to input the number of pages that the book is, and the more pages of the book, the more points you're going to get. You can look at this table right here that is also in the info doc. It's going to tell you how many points you're going to get. Basically, every 100 pages you read, you get 10 points for your team. Next up, there are the superpower prompts. These prompts are specific to each of the teams. The first two are the same for every team. The first is to read the team genre, and the second is to either read the team buddy read, which is going to be voted on in the Discord. Anyone can nominate a book that they'd like the team to read, and there will be a vote, and before December 1st, we will pick what book each team is going to read. Or for that exact same prompt, you can read one of the host's recommendations for the readathon. They do not have to be the host of your team. 
It just has to be any of those books. Then the other three prompts are specific to the team itself and we'll get into those in a minute. The third way to get in points is with attacking or defending. There are two different lists of prompts, one for attack and one for defense. If you choose to defend you are going to be adding points to your own team. This is just like page points and superpower prompts. All of those are going to boost your team's own score. But if you choose to attack, you are going to choose one of the other two teams and decrease their score by that much. So attack is the only thing that is going to be decreasing somebody else's score. It's not changing your pages and superpower to be negative against them. That is so that nobody is ever in the negative points. So you are going to choose which list you would like to do. You're going to check off every single prompt that applies there and all of that will become your attack or defense score. And the fourth and final and newest way for you to get points is the armory. The armory is a way for teams to work together to hit milestones. And once you hit those milestones, you can then have a type of bonus point. Here's the thing, there are eight different items that you could have in the armory, but you only have room to carry two at a time. So as things unlock, you and your team are going to have to strategize to which items you want to carry and which bonus points you want to have. Let me talk about the teams, their hosts, and their specific prompts. So for Fortress Frost, we have myself as a host, as well as my friends Danny from the Cytonic Reader and Emmy at Emmy Reads on Instagram. The three unique superpowers for this team are Wintry Weaponry, to read a book that has a weapon on the cover. This can be something like a knife or a bow and arrow or a sword. Or if you're reading something like sci-fi, it could be something like a mech suit or a spaceship if you know it has weapons on it. The next prompt is Christmas Court, a book with of in the title. So this is any book like A Game of Thrones, The Name of the Wind. And the final unique prompt is Second Snowman to read any book that is a direct sequel or conclusion. So as long as the book is not considered the first book in a series or a starting point in the series so that you could start there and not have read anything else, that will count for the superpower prompt. And these are all of the host recommendations. On the left, you will see all the wintry books that we picked out, whether they're sci-fi fantasy or not. And on the right hand side, you will see all of the sci-fi fantasy books we picked out, whether they are wintry or not. A couple of notes, if you are on any team, you can read any of these books for that superpower. And also, if one of the books on this host list is in a series, you can read the sequel instead of the first book. You just read in that series. Team number two is Castle Coco. So the team leads this year are Katie at Forevermore Pages and Justine at Library of Thieves, both on Instagram. And the three superpower prompts are Frosty Face to read a book with an obscured face on the cover. So this is going to be a book in which the person's head is on the cover, but the book is purposefully covering up the face. So one of the best examples is in the weeds this love light series where they have the person's head but it's covered up by something oh no percy fell percy no this isn't working okay that's better some things that i also think would count would be anxious people where you see their heads but they are turned away from the camera here is a bunch of books that i think count for this prompt where the head of the person is at least partially on the cover but the face is at least partially obscured. The second superpower prompt is small star to read a book with a small town or rural setting. So the majority of this book has to be set in either a small town community where everybody knows your name or in like an isolated place, like a house in the country. And prompt number five, advent artist. The main character is some sort of creative. They are a writer, an artist, a musician, an actor, a designer, something along those lines. I think that that is actually a pretty common thing that you see in this sort of sphere because writers are creatives. And these are all of the recommendations that the team put together for you. Again, Wintry on the left and on the right, we have the genre recommendations. 
The third team is Tundra Tower, our mystery thriller horror team. Our hosts are myself as well as Sarah from Voided Lux and Molly from Moonbloom Books. The three superpower prompts here are one, scary snow globe, to read a book that has the setting of the book on the cover. The second is Scrooge's Spectre. This is a book that includes a paranormal or supernatural element. This book can actively have ghosts or vampires or whatever on the page, but I will say if the book spends a lot of time believing that there are ghosts or a supernatural element and it turns out not to be true, I would say that that still is an element of the supernatural being woven into the plot. Then the third prompt is Holiday Holmes to read a book where the main character is some sort of detective or investigator, whether professionally or not. They are actively going around to different places. They are interviewing people, they are picking up clues, and otherwise sticking out their neck into something they maybe shouldn't be involved in, rather than a book where a main character is just dropped into something and is forced to figure something out. And these are all of the host recommendations, wintry on the left, genre on the right. You don't have to zoom in to look at all the books. These are all in the info doc. Now we're gonna talk about all the attack and defense prompts this year. There are 18 prompts in each. There are three prompts that are worth one point and then two, three, four, five, and six points. So for attack, we're gonna start with Bitter Blizzard to read a book that has a majority blue cover, then Subtle Snow to read a book where every single word in the title is white. Then we have Solo Sojourn, a book with exactly one person on the cover, no more, no less. Then we have Icicle Impact, a book with a serif font title. This little dangly part, that's a serif, versus Oryx and Crake, even though it's a similar looking font, doesn't actually have serifs on it. Then for Everest Expedition, you are going to read an author that is new to you. You have never read a book from this author before. Then Sloping Screen, you are going to read a book with a digital copy. So either this is an ebook or an e-audio book. Then for My Mistletoe, you are going to read a book that has a personal pronoun in the title. I, me, my, you, your, yours, his, hers, theirs, those type of words are going to be in the title of the book. For Family Fruitcake, you are going to read a book that includes family as a large part of the book, more than just the main character mentioning their family. They actually have interactions with their family on the page of the book. Or maybe um, a loved one has passed and that is like a big part of the book is like a grieving process, even if the person is not actively on the page. It can be a happy family that you're reading about or it can be a not happy family, like a daughter who's trying to overthrow her father the king. That still counts. Then for Camouflage Coat, this is one of the first prompts I came up with and I love it. I think it might be a little bit hard to find, but you are going to read a book where the spine of the book is actually a different color than the front cover of the book. Oh, knocked Percy down. In the Weeds has this orange cover, but the spine is a tan. Percy, I'm so sorry I picked up the book. I knew it would happen to you. This poor baby, all he wants to do is live a normal life. Then for Cool Curling, you are going to read a book with a one word title, including a or the. A book like Misery counts, a book like The Shining does not count. Then for Kindred Kinara, we're celebrating people coming together, so you are going to be reading a book that has multiple points of view. More than one character is narrating the book. For Inclusive Iceberg, you are going to be reading a book written by a person of color. Then for Frozen Favorite, you are going to be reading a book that has a 4.20 or above average rating on Goodreads. For Luge Leader, this one might be a little bit difficult. Uh, I made it, I thought that this was gonna be easier than it was, but you are going to be reading a book that was blurbed by an author that you've enjoyed. So you're gonna pick up the book that you're reading and you're going to look at all the blurbs that are on the back or Sometimes there's some on the inside or even within the first couple pages if it's a paperback and you are going to find an author that you have enjoyed a book from them before. It doesn't have to be a five star, just a book that you enjoyed. 
um, and it doesn't have to be every single book that the author written that you enjoyed. For example, for this book, Max Gladstone, who is one of the authors of This Is How You Lose the Time War, has blurbed this book, so I could choose that. If you do not physically have the book on you, I would encourage you to look at bookseller websites and see if they have any blurbs in the description of the book or you can look on the back cover and see if there are any there and if not you can definitely ask in the discord if anybody owns the book and can show you what the blurbed authors are. For Newly Nordic you are going to be reading a 2024 release or if you're someone who reads ARCs you can read an early release for 2025. For Popular Polar Bear you are going to be having a poll pick. So what you are going to do is you are going to put up a poll of at least three three books and you are going to have people vote on which book you should read. You can put this on your own social media, you can put this in the discord, you can give this to actual people that you know in real life. The book that wins you have to then read it before you put up another poll or you have to lock in that you are going to read that book within the month. And any book that loses a poll cannot be put into another poll. Then for First to Fire, you are going to read a book that has less than 15,000 ratings on Goodreads. Then the last attack prompt, Icy Item, you are going to be reading a book that has cold related or winter related item on the cover or word in the title. Please feel free to stretch this as far as you would like because it might be a little bit hard to find books like that. Then for the defense prompts, first up we have Wild Winter. You're going to read a book that has a primarily white cover. For Parka Padding, you are going to read a book that's title begins with the word THE. For Yuletide Yell, you are going to read a book with an all caps title. Every single letter of the title is a capital letter. For Reliable Reindeer, you are going to read an author that you have read before. For Powerful Present, you are going to be reading a book that you did not buy yourself. One way is if this was a present that somebody gave to you for a holiday, or if you are borrowing it from another person, if you got it from the library, or if it was sent to you by a publisher, if you picked it up from a little free library, any book that you did not spend money to acquire. So anything that's like a subscription, like Audible or like a book box or something like that, where you're buying a credit, you still paid for the book. That's not what we're going for here. We're looking for stuff on your TBR that maybe you should get to because people gave it to you. For Savvy Santa, you are going to read a book that has a name in the title. So this is A Love Song for Ricky Wild, that would count. The Air Affair, that is Jane Eyre. Oryx and Crake is also names of characters. Then for Hopeful Holiday, you are going to read a book that includes a holiday celebration any holiday, real or fictional. It does not have to be the focus of the book, just that the characters participate in some sort of celebration of a festival or holiday. This is another one of the first ones that I come up with. I was pretty happy with it. Frigid frosting. So frosting is the thing that goes on the outside of a cake. So what goes on on the outside of a book? A dust jacket. You are going to read a book that has a dust jacket. Then for sleek skiing, you are going to read a book that has at least a six word title. For example, again, A Love Song for Ricky Wilde, or One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Or down here, I have The Shadow of What Was Lost. Then for Thermometer Throwback, you are going to read a book that is set at least 40 years in the past. This is sort of what the definition of historical fiction is. So it can be said in the past, but it has to be at least 1984 or before. This can be a realistic book set in the past or it can be a fantastical book. As long as it says about what time period it's set, you're all good. For Colorful Cardigan, you are going to be reading a book by an LGBTQ plus identifying author. Then for Mid Mantle, you are going to be reading a book that has a 3.80 or below on Goodreads. For Personal Penguin, you are going to be reading a book that was recommended to you as a personal recommendation, not just a booktuber that you've watched said to their audience that they should read a book. A book that somebody has actually told you personally that you should read. So if you are looking for recommendations for this, we are going to have a channel on the Discord if you would like to talk about a couple of books or authors that you like and other people can recommend you books. For Old Ornament, you are going to be reading a book that is at least five years old, so a book that was released in 2019 or before. 
that's a lot of books you have to go through. For random ribbon, you are going to be doing a random letter generator to choose your book. You are going to do a random letter generator. And this letter is going to be the first letter of the title of the book or the series of the book or the author's first or last name. You've got four different chances to make it fit your thing. So for me, I did this and I got O, so I'm going to be reading Our Share of Night. So this is like the poll pick where if you do this one time, make sure you know for sure you are going to read a book that matches the first random letter that you roll before you end up planning to do another one. So now that I have picked that I'm going to read Our Share of Night, I am able to re-roll another letter to choose a different one. Then for Bobsled Buddy, you are going to be doing any sort of buddy read. So if you are reading with a book club, if you are buddy reading with one of your friends, you are going to count for points for this. This does not have to be the team buddy read, but it may. So that means if you participate in the team buddy read, you are going to get superpower points and you are going to be getting these defense points. Total of 16 points up for grabs. And the final prompt of defense is Cold Cabin, a book that has a cold setting at least predominantly featured. So the book does not entirely have to be set in this cold setting, but it has to be a good portion of it. So a lot of our team winter recommendations are going to be good picks for this. And if you have any questions about any of these prompts, definitely hit us up in the Discord and we can answer any questions you have, but definitely err on the side of yourself. Err on the side of giving yourself points. I'm not here to police you, we're here to read and have fun. Now we're going to talk about the entirely new way to get points and that is the armory. The idea here is you as a group are working together to read as much as you can in different sort of categories and once you hit a certain milestone that will then unlock an item for you to have bonus points throughout the rest of the readathon but you can only have so many bonus points at a time. So you and your team are going to have to decide which ones you want to have at a time. So how it's going to work is each team has their own identical armory. So nobody is stealing items from another. Everybody has their own. They're just all identical. The armory is going to unlock once 50% of the expected team size has logged at least one book. The expected team size is found from the number of people who do the sign-up sheet and pick that team. And the reason that the armory is ever locked is to remove small sample size bias. Things might unlock before they are supposed to. Once a team has met a specific milestone, an item will become available. So even if the armory is locked, your team is still working towards making the items become available. So you will only be able to equip an item once the armory is unlocked and the item is available. Each team can equip two items at a time. So that means the first two items that become available to you will automatically be equipped to your team and you will start getting bonus points. But once you unlock that third one and even the next ones after that, you need to start deciding which ones you wanna have. So there will be votes held on the Discord every single time a new item is unlocked to see if people would like to change which items are equipped. So if there's a lot of time left in the readathon after all of them have become available, we can hold more votes if people call for them. But right now we are just going to be doing every time something is unlocked. I would like to note when I'm talking about per person, this is on average. This is not each singular person needs to do a specific thing. It is on average. Let's talk through all of the items that you can get in the armory. The first of these is Spirit Keeper, which is a healing potion. For this milestone, the team must read four books per person. Doesn't matter what the books are, just four books per person on the team. And the bonus point here is that you get one base point per book. It doesn't matter what the book is. It doesn't matter if the book got you zero points. You get one point for free. It's a gimme. So this means there's no guessing or gambling with the amount of bonus points you're going to get. With the rest of these, not every book you're going to read may fit into this category. So is it worth it to pick it? The second item is Ice Pick, which is a spear. For this milestone, the team must read three books per person within the team genre. And the bonus point here is that reading within the team genre will now become 12 points instead of 10. 
So that superpower prompt is going to increase in point value. Then the next item is Strength Wielder. This is a potion to increase your strength. The milestone here is if the team has read 1,500 pages per person on the team. And the bonus here is that each 100 pages is now going to be worth 10.5 points rather than 10. For Helm of Hail, this is of course a helmet, the team is going to have to have read two books per person in one of the three superpower prompts. So if the most popular on Fortress Frost is that a lot of people are reading the weapon on the cover, as soon as two books per person have crossed that off. That means that now all of the team's specific superpower prompts are going to be worth 12 points instead of 10. Then we have Comet's Air, which is our bow. And the milestone here is that the team has attacked with three books per person. The bonus here is that the three most popular attack prompts are going to be worth two more points each. So whichever three prompts are considered the most popular at the time of equipping the item are going to have that two point bonus until it is unequipped. If you re-equip it, the three might change. Then for White Thorn, which is our shield, it is the same thing but for defense. So if you have defended with three books, the three most popular defense prompts are going to get that two point bonus. Then we have Heart Warmer, which is our plate armor. If the team has read two books per person that are worth 75 points or more, the bonus will be all of the one point and two point defense prompts are going to be worth two more points each. So every single one point prompt is now going to be worth three points, and every single two point prompt is now going to be worth four points. And this can stack with the other most popular defense prompts. And Frostblade is our sword. The milestone here is if the team has grossed 500 points per person. So that includes all of the attack points that the team accrued and does not include any attacks done against the team. So just grossing points. Then all the one and two point prompts for attack will be worth those two more points. Also, I would like to note that the attack bonuses in the armory are going to actually increase your attack score. Defense prompts, superpower prompts, page prompts are all increasing your team score. If the armory points that you have are affecting your attack prompts, they are boosting the attack. They are not just going to your own team score. I'm unsure if the armory is going to work out exactly as I wanted to do. This was the thing that I wanted to do last year and I couldn't figure it out. So hopefully this all goes to plan. Um, it may be a little bit confusing at first. I hope I've explained it well. And if not, definitely check out the info doc and ask questions in the discord. I'll answer a couple of FAQ that might come up before we go. The first, do I have to be on the same team as last year? Nope, you can be on whatever team you want. Do you have to have participated last year to participate now? Nope, welcome. How much do I need to read to participate? As much or as little as you like. This is just about celebrating reading and having fun with other readers. I really want to encourage people to read as much as they feel comfortable reading and not try to push them further than that. Next, what types of book count is reading? Anything that you think counts as reading. Audiobooks, ebooks, physical books, manga, graphic novels, comics, middle grade, young adult, new adult, adult, anything counts. Then can I count DNFs or books that I did not completely read in December towards my points? The answer is yes with a caveat. If you have read either half of or 200 pages of your book, whichever one is less. So if you've read a 500 page book, you can read 200 pages of the book and count it. If you've read a 300 page book, you can read 150 pages and count it. But what you are going to do in the book tracker form is you are going to type in the number of pages that you did read within December instead of the full amount of pages of the book. Why are team standings calculated per person? This is because not all of the teams are the same size. Because I am making it so that they are genre based, I want people to pick the genre that they like the most and not force people to be on specific teams. And last year we had a team that was twice the size as the other two teams. So having that average was important because if I didn't 
there would only be one team that would even be close to winning. And the average per person is counted as the number of people who have actually logged a book. So if a person has signed up for the readathon and then never actually submitted anything, that is not going to count against the team. Do I have to participate in Bookstagram or the Discord or whatever to participate in the readathon? Answer is no. The only things you have to do are read books and submit the, to the book tracker form to participate, but you can be on the social medias as much or as little as you would like. Does blank book count for blank prompt? If you think it does, it does. I'm not gonna police you, this is for fun. If you really have any burning questions, feel free to ask in the Discord and your team and I can help answer. I think that I made a mistake in my submission. What do I do? All of your book submissions are actually collecting your email and it should be sending you an email receipt every single time you submit a book. And you actually have the ability to, through that receipt, edit your submission. So that's what you're gonna do. You don't need to contact me. You don't need to like submit another thing. You can just edit what you have. So make sure the email that you sign up with is an email that you actually have access to. And lastly, I just wanted to shout out a couple of people. Uh, thank you to all of my hosts for helping me massage my prompts around. I like to shout out to Covers with Cassidy for hosting Realmathon in 2023, which definitely informed the structure of Freezathon last year a lot, as well as Hollowathon, which is hosted by my friend Linnea on Instagram. I stand on the shoulders of giants. Thank you everybody for your help. But that is all that I have about Freezathon today. So I would love it if you would read with us and sign up down below. Definitely join the Discord. I'm going to be working really hard this week between filming this and putting the video up to make sure I have all the information available and ready for you on the Instagram and the Discord. So I can't wait to read with you all and get ready to throw some snowballs. So if you would like to follow me or the Readathon anywhere on the internet, you can find us at the links in the description. And if you'd like to see more videos from me, including reading some books for Freezeathon, you can hit that subscribe button. And as always, I will see you in the next one.